that was easy. Hi, so I want to talk about a really interesting quirk about the decidable languages with regard to homomorphism. So recall that a homomorphism between two sets A and B, so inputs in some set A and outputs in set B, it's a homomorphism if you can separate out the strings that are in A. So for example, if you have two strings X and Y, and we want to apply H to it, so X and Y, their concatenation is some string in A, then it's a homomorphism if it's the property that we can separate it out into individual characters if we wanted to. So, or individual parts at the very least. So we have H apply to individually the X's and the Y, and then we take that result, H of X is in B, H of Y is also in B, and we make the concatenation of those. So most language classes that we come across are closed either under homomorphism or inverse homomorphism or both, but we're going to show one that is actually very interesting about the decidable languages, that they are not closed under homomorphism, but they are closed under inverse homomorphism, which is something I've never seen before, which is pretty cool. So let's prove both of those. Okay, let's prove that decidable languages are closed under inverse homomorphism. So let's suppose that we have a homomorphism right here, which is going from some set to some other set. It actually won't matter because we'll just prove this in the general case. And the inverse homomorphism is all of the strings such that the homomorphism applied to those strings is in L. So let's try to visualize what's going on here. So we're going to have two sets here. So this is the set of all possible strings, let's say, in the domain of the homomorphism. I'm just calling it sigma, but it, you can call it whatever you like. And we have the language L here. So what we want to do is we want to de decide the inverse homomorphism. So what we want to do is what we want to see what strings in here, when applied to H, land in here. So we have some string, let's call it X, and let's say that applying H to it lands to H of X way over there, and so we're applying H there. And we would say yes, we would want to say yes here, because it's the in the inverse homomorphism. It's the strings that applying H to it land in the language here. And suppose that we have some string y right here, that's, this is the bad guy, that lands over here when we apply h to it. On this particular input y, we should say no, because applying h to it is not in the language L. So if we have a decider for the language L, then I claim we have a decider for the inverse homomorphism of L. Why? So we're, we're, we have a decider for this guy over here. And the homomorphism is a computable property because we can break up the string into each individual character and apply the homomorphism to each one of them. Homomorphisms in general are computable. So we assume that the homomorphism is computable for this, but applying the homomorphism that uh, means that if we have the string x as input, this is the input over here, we can just apply the homomorphism and get the string h of x, we can write it onto the tape, and then we can just run the decider for whatever the language is. So therefore, this, when we're over here, it runs in a finite amount of time because we assume we have a decider for l, and this h function takes a finite amount of time because we assume that it's computable. And so therefore, this whole process of figuring out whether x should be accepted or not, that takes a finite amount of time. That is a way to show that decidable languages are closed under inverse homomorphism. Now let's show that decidable languages are not closed under homomorphism. Okay, so let's prove that decidable languages are not closed under homomorphism. So let's recall the language ATM. It doesn't have to be ATM. You can use any language that you want here. There's a suitable way to approach it, but we're going to use it this way. So this is the acceptance problem for Turing machines, and it's not decidable. So it's, we're given a Turing machine and an input W here, 
And the ATM problem is asking whether or not this Turing machine accepts this input. And there's a classic proof to show that this is not decidable. But let's suppose that we enforced a condition uh, within n steps the Turing machine runs, where I put in here the condition, the number n right here. So if I put the number n in as input right here, then this problem is decidable in that particular case because I can just run the Turing machine for n steps. So how can we actually bake this into a different problem and use a homomorphism to land on the acceptance problem for Turing machines, which is obviously not decidable. So this is how we're going to approach it. Okay, so this is actually a pretty complicated language, but I highlighted in yellow and red the important parts. So suppose that we have two strings, x and y, where x is just some string in 0, 1 star that encodes some Turing machine and an input w. y crucially is a string over a different alphabet. So notice that x is over 0 and 1, y is over a and b, and y is encoding some integer n. So it's written in a different character set, and that's the crucial part. We'll get to that in a second. And we enforce the condition that m accepts w in n steps. So this is clearly decidable because I can run the Turing machine in n steps. It's formatted a little bit differently, but I can still extract out the Turing machine and just run it on that input and just run it for n steps and we're done. So how can we use the homomorphism to arrive at the ATM problem that we did before? The key here is that we can map any string to any other string. And because it's a homomorphism, we can map any character to any string. So essentially what we need to do is if we make the Y part disappear, then it remains undecided. It goes back to being undecidable because the Y part is the thing that's keeping this from being undecidable. It's allowing the Turing machine to stop after a certain amount of time. So here's the homomorphism we're going to apply. So h of zero is going to be zero. So anytime we see a zero, we're going to not change it. If we see a one, we're not gonna change it. So that represents in the x part, I'm not going to change the x part whatsoever. I'm gonna leave it as is. But the y part is gonna change. So h of a is going to be the same as h of b, which is the empty string. So effectively, when we apply the h function to this guy, the x part is going to stay there, and the y part is going to go away because it's just a bunch of a's and b's, and the homomorphism is going to convert all of those to the empty string. And so therefore, the only thing that we have left is the x part, which is clearly encoding just a Turing machine and an input, and m accepting w. But now we have no limit on how long the Turing machine runs, and we're back at the acceptance problem, which is clearly undecidable. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about decidable languages and inverse homomorphisms in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.